Okay, so so far we looked at you know the general purpose register, the special registers, system register, this and that. And now I want to take a moment and guide on you know or explore how this uh, A class APUs boot up, right? And uh, this kind of you know should enable you to imagine end to end flow of what goes on. So firstly, again, you know, let me get myself out of the way, and I'm not looking as awesome, so I'll turn the lights on. Okay, so this, this is nice. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is want us to imagine and imagine with better colors uh, that this is a CPU, which is the A-class CPU. Right? And we are talking about, we're going to explore how this boots up. So the moment power is released on this thing, right? You know, the reset is released, so to speak. What will happen is the program counter will be pointing to a memory you know a location in the memory and that's like hard coded in that program counter again there are mechanisms as to you know how that can be changed and this and that but safe to assume that the cpu as it you know starts you know, the power is uh, turned on on it the program counter is pointing to some memory location and whatever is the instruction at that point it will simply start to execute it right it will just start to fetch one instruction after the other and you know go ahead and execute now usually what happens is we start off with some uh, you know assembly code and that assembly code eventually may kind of you know jumps into um, the or jumps to the location where the code generated as a result of the c files is present essentially you wrote code in c and that is what now we want to you know execute the assembly or the machine code generated as a result but one of the things about c function calls right uh, is that it requires stack right and typically each processor provides like a register uh, to you know be treated like a stack pointer and so we have like a stack pointer dedicated within the a class cpus and so your initial code here some part of the code here needs to set you know load the stack pointer with a valid memory address so that once you know the execution jumps to a uh, code that requires the stack the stack is available right the stack pointer is pointing to the right location so these are like the two preconditions the, the program counter is going to point to a memory location and start to execute from there but if you have your code uh, which was you know as a result of the c um, language and function calls are uh, involved then you must must also set the stack pointer all right and this is key because as we explore uh, in our case study uh, we'll take a look at the fact that you know the stack pointer was loaded all right this is now like you know single core boot now let's take a look at what happens in case of you know multi core boot right so you have uh, a class CPUs of the same um, same type or capable uh, or same architecture, let's say, right? And this situation is called SMP, simultaneous multiprocessing. So what will happen is each of their program counter uh, will point to the exact same memory location, right? And now the thing is, each one of them is going to fetch exactly the same instructions and you know uh, do the processing. Uh, but now obviously we have four cpus so something uh, you know we should take uh, advantage of their parallel execution capabilities so then what you want to do is somehow uh, make cpu let's say cpu 2 jump elsewhere cpu 3 jump elsewhere and cpu 4 uh, jump elsewhere where you have you know different code and so that they can go ahead and execute some other program like a actual in parallel right um, execute as an independent entity so the question is how do we do that and then the second thing is uh, if this code now was a result of the c code like generated from c code and functional calls were involved then each of the cpu the stack pointer within right the stack pointer should also point to different locations in RAM uh, so that you know the stacks are separate. 
because if you don't do it and only set like the same stack pointer on all of them um, the different codes are going to kind of you know screw up each other's stack essentially use the same memory location as the stack and that is not good so we on multi-processing systems then we want the program counters to eventually diverge you know go to different places and we also want uh, the stack pointers to be set differently right for each processor so the question was then how can you uh, make each processor jump to different code and the answer to that is that there is a register called mpidr on each of these cpus it's cpu specific so what can we do is as they start off uh, you know with this uh, pointing to the same memory location in the initial as part of the initial code what we can do is read this mpidr register and infer the id of the cpu right and then based on uh, you know which cpu it is we can uh, go ahead and load the stack pointer uh, with different addresses and those addresses are to depend on some mathematics relating to the id uh, a good example would be let's say we say that the stack pointer can start at the memory location let's say hex 1000 for example now if the id of the cpu is let's say um, for example zero in primary core um, uh, then we can say hey z uh, you know id into uh, 1000 plus 1000 like hex 1000 right and this 1000 is essentially this right and we can say okay load the sp with this value now what will happen is for the id zero will point cpu 0 at hex 1000 but cpu 1 now uh, will point to hex 2000 right so essentially we are separating each of their stack uh, by you know hex 1000 which is 4k and then the mathematics is dependent on the id so that is one clever trick in which we can set different stack pointers for different uh, cpu based on its id and so I think this register is MPIDREL1, if I'm not wrong. And then the other thing is, similarly, we can use the ID uh, to kind of also, you know, make the individual CPU jump to different locations. Right? And if we achieve that, then we have each of the processor with its own stack pointer and pointing to different memory location to fetch the instructions. And, you know, off they go uh, in their different directions and, you know, execute different programs. Now, setting up all of this is obviously, uh, you know, more involved uh, and there are more, much, many more settings to get the CPU to be set up properly and actually, you know, boot up to the operating system. But this is the bare minimum. You need the point, uh, program counter to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, or rather your code needs to be at the location where the program counter will point to. And the second thing is the stack pointer needs to be set. And if you're you know, going after multi-core, then you have to cleverly use the MPIDR register to uh, send each of the core to different uh, locations to fetch the instructions from. All right. So uh, that is about how the CPUs boot up. In the, uh, in the next video, we'll dive into a, uh, a use case or a demo, which kind of guides on the multi-core boot.